Welcome, welcome. It is really good to be here today. I really appreciate so many wonderful emails that I get from you all, honest emails. So I'm kind of building all those into tonight. So the first thing that I really want to talk about is spring. You know, winter, I don't like winter. Can I just be honest? <laughs> I think it's because I grew up in Miami, Florida. We didn't have a winter. Winter was, you know, 70 degrees. Um, but I love the change of season, yada, yada, yada. But winter is, you know, you got to like tough. You got to toughen it out. It's a little tougher to do winter than it is summer for many, for many, especially after the holidays. We had great fun, da, da, da. And then it just kind of is this lull where it's cold and foggy and yucky. Okay, so we're going to talk about spring because we're going to come out of that cold, yucky stuff and we're going to get ready for spring and we're going to be happy. And I had, <laughs> I've had quite a few emails of, I haven't sewn in a month. How do I start back? Okay, and so I'm going to give you a couple ideas. Number one, um, we're going to look at this first picture. And this first picture is this, um, I was just kind of scrolling around on YouTube and I saw this before and after and I was amazed at this before and after. I mean, I watched the whole thing. I couldn't tell you where it is. But I want you to look at this haircut before and after. And so my number one suggestion to you, and I did this last week, go get a new haircut. Just get a new haircut. You know what? And go to somebody new. I know many of you will not, but go to somebody you haven't gone before and just tell them to do whatever they want. You know, the coolest thing about hair is it grows back. So it can't be that bad, right? If you don't like it, it will grow back. So get a haircut and go for it. And that'll be the beginning of spring. We're going to inch our way there. Once you do that, you'll feel amazing. And then you'll come home and sew and you're going to you're going to order these patterns and you're going to sign up for the class because we're going to do a whole bunch. But even before that, you could order 323. If you go back Thursday night, 323, I had a lady come in the store Saturday and she'd already made 323. She got it, made it, wore it. She'd already made two of them, actually, and it looked amazing on her. So make up 323. It's a PBS pattern. We need the donations for Fit to Stitch anyway. So go to 323, see what it is, make it up. It's amazing. Okay, that's how we're going to get started back into sewing because, and I know many of you are sewing, don't take me wrong, but you know, some are just having a harder time getting back in and getting going and, you know, because you take off for the holidays because you do so many different things. So it's time to regroup. And I found it was interesting. I went to an event the other day and, and this lady that I was talking to, it just so happens that she was, um, a, she placed people. She was a professional I know there's a name for that, but I don't know what it's called. Anyway, a professional recruiter. She placed people high, high education all over the country. And she said the number one problem that they were having was that people wanted to stay home and companies no longer wanted people to stay home. And so I, and we were talking about how the trend from COVID and how everyone's kind of wanting to stay home, but it's so good for us to go. It's so good for us to go. So go, okay? <laughs> Go, 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 and, and I know you'll be happy about that. Okay, so we're going to start off, and we're going to talk about the spring colors because they're beautiful and they're exciting. So let's look at this first picture, and we'll take a look, and we're going to see what these colors are. And you see they are really beautiful. I've got some of them here. This is an orangeade. Red is really popular. We've got mixed colors. We've got um, kind of a, you know, periwinkle. White is really popular. We had a, a milk a couple seasons ago. It's really a true white. And that new fabric that I put up, which is a herringbone, is a beautiful, beautiful white. It's an Alexander Wang, and it's a perfect typical. Everything we put up today, if you look at, did I put it up today? Or last, I'm sorry, it was today. It's been a long day. It was earlier today. Yes, I put them up. If you look at those, I purposely put up like a chambray blue. A chambray, partly I think it's just because denim is so popular still. It still continues to be really popular. A wider leg, we'll go through all that, but just look at the colors. They're pretty, they're bright. Uh, the greens, I think, are pretty. I think prettier than we've seen greens in a while. Um, the beiges, the creams, the whites, they're just pretty. They're pretty color. And the single thing that we can do is be on um, score on one of these colors. The, there's a lilac in there. It's just pretty. So watch your colors, like, and really pay attention. Take a screenshot of this, or you can go online and just search for um, Pantone Spring 2024 colors, and you can really see, and you can print it out. Because I have a tendency, I've printed it out and I take it in my purse, just so that as I'm shopping, I can see how much is really, 
you know, there's a forecast and there's a reality as to how much actually the designers actually followed. So what's in the store though, we are seeing the yellow, the pale yellow. It's a very pale yellow, it's pretty. It's not a, a brighter yellow. We're still seeing a brighter yellow in the stores anyway, but that pale yellow is really nice and that pale lilac. And remember, even though it's on these color charts, it really does take a little while for the designers to kind of follow sync. And so the colors are slow to change, but you know, go through your stash and um, you know, see what you like, but again, don't be afraid to get rid of that stash. Clean it out, you know, it's nothing like, giving you permission to bring in new when you get rid of some of that stash. Okay, so colors. I looked at this next picture because Chanel is doing it and they did all white and I thought it was just such a pretty picture. But what I want you to notice is how they went with dark shoes. And that's something I wouldn't have done, but I found that was interesting and that's Chanel. And it's not because they don't have white shoes, they have white shoes. That was done purposely. So I just thought that was interesting. But that all um, top to bottom, monochromatic, we carried it over from the fall is still really stylish and it's very pretty. All right, then we go with the next one and we're gonna see, I want you to see this off shoulder. So the off shoulder trend is just very, very popular and, and I like it, but I wanted to really find something that we could all do, maybe a little more modest than, than some of these off shoulders. Some of these off shoulders are, I don't know, they're just not, I, I wouldn't wear them as, and I'm not saying I'm that modest, but I just, you know, I don't know. It's somehow I feel like it's almost too young, but I love this. This is what brings us to our first pattern and it's the one I have on and it's pattern number 94. We'll show the next one and it's Halsbrook off shoulder poncho. Love this, love this. The minute I saw it, I fell in love with it. I thought that's perfect because well, really what I was looking for when I knew these, what these trends were, is what we could do that was off shoulder, that we could still do a bra, still do da da da, you know, still just be normal people, but it was really flattering and very timely. And, and this, this pattern I think is perfect for it. A million ways to do it. Shears, I actually started, there's a, a dotted orangeade with gold dots on our website. I don't have the fabric numbers, you guys, sorry, but I've actually cut that out. I don't have it made up yet but I've cut it out because it's just perfect. It's the right color, it's, it's sheer, it's off shoulder. It's like all the trends going right now. So that was my plan. I mean, that's what I'm gonna make. I'll have it for you later. I'll wear it later. But it's just a really pretty top. And so we did two and one is um, just a multicolor and then the one I have on is a black and white. And we have a panel print in our, that I put up new this morning. It's a black and white panel print. And it would be, again, stunning in this pattern. Just the whole fact that you could put the panel on an angle um, and it would, it would go on the angle and it, it just pretty. That's exactly why I put it up. I wanna go back one picture, if you don't mind. Go to that gold. It was the off-shoulder gold, yes. So this is actually Ralph Lauren's fashion show for spring 2024. And what I want you to pay attention to is the gold. And, and as I've been reading and reading and reading, and I love reading about these fashions. I love reading about why they come into existence and why, you know, a lot of times they're a tribute to something. And this summer is the Olympics. And so the gold is one of the colors that's going to be really prevalent because it's kind of giving a nod to the Summer Olympics this summer in 2024. So I felt, thought that was interesting that Ralph Lauren did not just the off shoulder, but the gold, just for a little bit of glitz. You don't have to do this whole thing like this one is because, you know, I don't know that we want to be that quite that bold. This is a model who's very famous, but anyway, we don't want to be that, that bold, but we could be. Okay, so there we have it. The reason why the off shoulder, very, very um, pretty, very soft, and yet really doable in all ages. And then we have the gold trend. Okay, so if we look at the next one, what we see in our trends is that's the gold I'm talking about. And I, I went to, goodness gracious, at least six different designers. And you saw gold in every single one. So it was clearly across the board. It wasn't anything I read anywhere. It was simply that I could see it repeatedly. Once I saw it, and it was very bold, I saw it over and over and over. Um, all right, so if we look at the next one, We'll see um, all of these, and I know you can't necessarily see it very well, and I didn't care that you, wanted, you could see it that well. Really what I was trying to get across 
is that gathers are in every one of those photos there's gathers gathers are very prominent we we see them a lot they're in the sleeves they're in the um, bodices they're in everything gathers are just really popular so if you don't like them you know you can ignore it if you if you like them embrace them and where where we did it or where i did it and this was this next picture if we look at it I did it in this 224. And because there's soft gathers coming in through here, there's gathers down the front, there's this asymmetrical closure right here, there's gathers across the tummy, very flattering for a tummy. And so this is just a really great way to move the eye vertical and yet have a great, and it can be a tunic or a dress, 224. And I just love it. V-neck, it's a dual layer right in through here. This layer comes up over top, and so those soft gathers are just really, really pretty. Okay, so gathers. We want to put a little bit of gathers into everything. How much you put in is completely up to you. You've got to remember, though, just the one thing is gathers. More fabric is typically not better. So be very careful the way you do them and, you know, that we don't add too much in the wrong places. I guess that's the best way I know how to say that. All right, so... Any questions that we can answer so far? Okay, so let's keep going. One of the big trends that we're seeing is texture. Not just textured fabric, but texture being made. And I'm certain that's why this fringe is so popular. I'm gonna show you several high-end designers that have fringe, and this is not cheap fringe, this is 2600. This is very expensive fringe. But the coolest thing about fringe is, you all, is that it's so doable. I mean, we can do this and really duplicate. This is just a cape. It's a simple little cape. Um, the layers are put on top. The fringe for that beautiful texture, $2,600. So these, this fringe concept, if you like it, is a good one to copy. And the reason I wanted to show several of these fringe is because it's, te it's the texture that's so beautiful. And texture on the top, and typically no texture on the bottom gives us a much more balanced look. So if we look at this next one, we see texture again. Again, very high end, very expensive, but I think it's just pretty. I just really think it's pretty. But as you, if you like fringe, search for it. Put it in your search bar, search for fringe for spring 2024. It'll come up all over the place. Let's look at this next one. And what I wanna show you is all the different ways it can be done in each of these tops, bottoms, um, there's really no limit and there's no excuse. Fringe will make you look current and trendy. So all you have to do is find a way that you like fringe. Uh, you can do, you know, like this garment I have on and fringe just the bottom. Do it in a knit. There's so many ways to do it and it's attractive and it's pretty and it's current. So the whole trend right now is actually going back to the 90s. And they're kind of repeating the whole 90s era. But if you think about it, the 90s, we're repeating a previous era. So we're kind of, you know, some of us have lived through a couple of these eras now, and that's okay. The good news is we can pick what we like and we can leave off what we don't and come up with some really nice looking garments. Okay, then if we look at this next one. Um, <laughs> this was just on the little funny side here because oversizing is really popular. To wear something that is larger than you are is something that is really stylish and it's something that you all know, if you know me a little bit, you know that I just can't stand it. There's nothing worse for our bodies or for our shapes or for our figures than wearing something that is just too big for us. We, we have a tendency to want to cover and that cover can really be a negative. As you can see, she definitely has covered up a little bit too much and she definitely doesn't, it's not a flattering look. And there, let me tell you, if you search for and I mean, I just was laughing. I was laughing so hard. I was crying at my computer. If you search for 2020, spring 2024 oversize garments, <laughs> there's just some really, really funny ones. Maybe in the emails the next few days, I'll put some in. Because there was, like I said, some that I just was laughing. I was by myself and I was laughing so hard. I, I was crying at my desk. Please show the front of the bluish purple top. Sure. just comes down, it twists around. How it twists is a big secret. It's tied in, it's got gathers through the side here. 
And then I used the selvage because this particular fabric had just a great uh, selvage on it and I wanted to use it. So I used it at the bottom. This is a Ponte Roma knit. It had stretch in both directions. Now all of the fabrics, as you all know, because you bought them all, we had them all. We had them all. They're all, you know, they're all, I don't have any of these fabrics now, but the reason I put up this morning fabrics like that blue striped chambray, I thought that would be really pretty for this. I just thought, <laughs> thought all new fabrics and putting them out, you guys would recognize which one was for which one. Okay, then we're gonna go into the next one here, and we're gonna see our wide-legged pant. And our wide-legged pant is just going to be welcomed. It is called the Palazzo, and we know that name. We, we, we've heard it, we've worn it, we love it, but the Palazzos are definitely back. And I'm gonna tell you, I remember wearing them, I don't know, I, was, I think I was in grade school, can't, junior high maybe, but I think I just love them. I love this pant and I will tell you, I don't, I have two, I made, I've made several, but I made a navy version and I just made it one layer and I, I, I was really, really, I loved it. And I'll tell you what really inspired me. If you go back to our October trip, and our October New York trip, we did a little designer's trip and we went to Lafayette 148 and we tried on um, you know, we went, to the, we went to the boutique. They allowed us to come into the boutique and try on their different clothes. And one of the ladies there um, had a pant on, and the pant was a little wider leg. And I was just amazed at how much thinner she looked with that. It wasn't wide, but wider leg than a, pe than a straight leg. It was really, really flattering. I thought, you know what, I've got to really deliver this. And so I've really been working on what is it about a palazzo that makes a palazzo flattering and it's the shape of the upper leg and so that took me a long time to figure that out well not I don't know about a long time but anyway once I figured it out this is so much in the shaping of the leg now what I did here is this is a dual layer because this is a sheer over a knit what is important when you're doing these pants for spring is that they really have um, kind of a they're almost like a statement, if that, I don't know if that's the way to say it, but they're like a statement and they're very pretty. And rather than the leggings I have on now, I could easily have put on the same pair and I would have if I'd had a black pair. The pair I made for the cover was navy and I didn't have a black pair, I didn't have time to get it done. But so in doing these pants, what I really wanted also is then when you're wearing the palazzo and you're wearing that wider leg, what do you wear with it? And if you'll notice a lot of pictures that you'll search for, they're wearing short tops. And so that was the reason for doing the new top that really kind of went with it. But also, um, it's important to note, like a jean jacket would be fabulous. You just don't want too much top because the pants are really the beautiful, flowy part of all this. So if we look at this next picture, we'll see that that's a basic black pant, but we'll see it's with a wider leg. And I've got some really beautiful wool that I'm going to be put. It's a, like a Florida wool all year round that'll make a beautiful pair. It'll go up this Thursday night. It'll make a beautiful pair of that, of that pant. Um, what faux textures would you suggest to my fringe? You know, you don't need faux textures, any textures. You could do just a regular knit. Um, there's just, as long as you like both sides, you can do the fringe on just so many things. Any good sources for fashion fringe yardage? I'm gonna give you a source, but I don't know if they have fringe. Embellish trims, embellish trims. Marla is the owner and I just adore her. Embellishtrims.com, I think it is. I don't know if she has fringe though. The other one you might look at is Benno's buttons. I think they had fringe a little while ago to just actually sew it on. I'm a big believer that you can just literally cut the fabric and make it, but I get that, you know, there's limitations as to doing that. So the inner layer of the palazzo pants must be knit and the outer layer can be a woven. They can actually both be a woven as long as you adjust your size. So as long as you adjust your size, it doesn't matter how you do it. Just remember that if you're gonna use the stretch to get them on, you have to use a knit and otherwise you can use a woven. So it just depends on your size. It's open for both actually, okay? Because I really wanted them to be all about the fabric and if you found a great shear and it was a woven, you could use that. You just have to make a little bit bigger or you could make a knit band 
to pull them on with. So lots of variables there. And, and that's the whole reason you guys know this class. We're doing this class on these new patterns. And the whole reason I'm doing this class is because I find that even though these are, I don't know, I just feel like there's so many variables to these. I, maybe more so now than, than ever. And I just felt like there wasn't time to really get through all those variables and a class was a good time to do it. So that was the reason I, we created this class was so that I could take each of the patterns and really expound as to how to get the most out of them and how to make them flattering and fashionable for spring. And they're quick and they're quick and easy. And then you can see that um, the top here is done again here in the red. And this is the same 324 and it's that cardigan and I love it because it can be open for a cardigan and it can be worn open or you can sew it in and close it and slip it over your head as a top. I just love this top. <laughs> can a short person wear palazzo pants? Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, it's got to be in proportion and there's some proportions that you probably ought to know. Um, if I'm doing a an outer seam of 40 and my circumference around the bottom is 20, that's half. So if I shorten that height, I should shorten that circumference by half or lessen that. I said that wrong. I should lessen that circumference by half. So my circumference of my pants should be half what my height is. And then from there, it's shaping of the leg. But I mean, I've done that for you in the pattern, but if you're shortening it, you don't have to short, you don't have to change the thigh shape. You're just going to take it off the bottom. Okay. Um, do you like the pants also with just one layer? Love them. Love them. I, uh, the pair I made is a really lightweight navy knit. And I, I, yes. Honestly, you guys, I don't put out a new pattern unless I'm in love with it, okay? I mean, there's a lot of clothes I could do. But I want to go and go and go until I find a pattern that I'm in love with. And these are all, I can honestly tell you that these are all that way. And that new 323, we don't have it in here. It's kind of a new pattern. I, I love that thing. Just love it. The goal is to keep your sewing really fashionable and really easy and really fun. So that's our goal. So our last then, um, I think our last picture, we had one more. Oh, that's the top I have on. Is that the last one? Did I show all the fronts? Oh, that's the top, 324. 324 is the top, which are these two right here. We did one in red. Red is really popular. And then, of course, the orangeade. Okay. Okay. All right. So now it's your time to ask questions. I've done all of my stuff, and I'm going to give it to you all to ask questions or to go sew. I'm going home and going sew because there's things I haven't finished that I want to get done. All right. Let's see if we have questions. Appreciate y'all being here. It's fun. I have a question about the yardage listed on the back of the pants pattern. Should I just email you? Yeah, I mean, I don't have the back of the pants pattern, so I don't know. You can try to ask it here. I don't know if I'll know, <laughs> but you can give it a shot. Would you double a faux suede or ultra suede due to the fact that they are thin thickness? Would you double faux suede or ultra suede? You mean like in a fringe, maybe? Maybe you're talking about if you're making a fringe. Um, I probably would not. I think there's just, they're too thick, I think. I don't know if that's the right answer because I don't know the question. Can an apple shape wear a palazzo pants? Hips and waist almost the same size. Yes, that's exactly why I did that outfit. Do this outfit exactly like this is. If I took this cl the clothes off of this mannequin, you would see that her hips are bigger than her bust. Okay, so you want to do this outfit exactly why it is. It's why we did. It's why I did this top, because it it had you you needed some guidance as to how what to wear with that palazzo pant. You can't wear a long shirt with it. You can wear something that will cover your tummy. You can do all that, but you can't go long and you can't, you know, you, you got to wear a shorter top or a jean jacket, something of that nature. Do you have the fabric that looks like the color blocked? No. I had. I had. I had this too. It's, no, you guys, usually when I'm working on the patterns, you know, it's the fabric that's up in November. 
December at the latest, because that's really when I'm doing the patterns. I'm still doing some now. I'm still making, you know, different changes on them now, but they're pretty much all done. By the time we have the photo shoot, which is in December, the patterns are all done. I have to have all the garments made by then. On the blue tunic, can you show how that tie works? It's a separate piece or stitch down? It's a separate piece and stitch down. It's both. Um, it's a separate piece that comes this way, but then it twists and sews into the side seam on top. Okay. The pattern lists three yards for my size. Is that for each layer? This is probably for the pant, right? No, three yards is total. If you decide you want two layers of different fabrics, just divide it in half. Okay. Will you be getting any stretch velvet soon? No. No. I, I stopped buying stretch velvet. You know, I say that and I'm staring at some stretch velvet over there. I might have a little bit left, but if in, in the next week or so, I, I won't have any fall fabrics left, period. Everything in here is spring. So we have, <laughs> you know, and it's partly, you guys, because that's, you know, this is what comes to us because spring is there. Like I went to a fashion show Saturday morning and it was spring. It's everything, every, you know, everybody's freezing. Don't get me wrong, but it's a spring. The models were even freezing, but it's a spring show. And so know that New York is cutting spring. And because we're buying those leftover fabrics, everything I'm getting or seeing or they don't have any winter left. It's all gone. And so we we just kind of follow that. We've got, I mean, I've got a little bit left, but I don't have much. I've gotten, I purposely got a lot of it up and we've had some good sales and some good prices. But I will look through and if I have any stretch velvet, I'll put it up for Thursday. How's that? Okay, regardless of the color. The top you have on, is your one arm going through the slit in the sleeve? Um... There's no slit. I mean, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, both, both, both sides are the same. I just put a pin here because I was cold. <laughs> to be honest, it's like 40 degrees here and I'm dressed in spring and I'm freezing. But anyway, they're, no, they're both the same. <laughs> are the plazo pants in the, in the new patterns just ordered? Yes. Okay, so let's just go over these four new patterns, okay? Um, 3424 is the pant. 324, they all end in 24. That way you can remember. They're the only patterns that end in 24 because this is 2024. So 3424 is a yoga pant in 24 because the yoga pant's 3400. So the yoga, the, the dual logo, or the, well, I can't talk, is 3424. Then this is 324. And this one is 224, and the one I have on is 94. 094. You have to put in 094, though, for it to actually come up. What happens to the fabric for the past season? Uh, Y'all have it. We've sold it all. <laughs> you have it. It's all, it's gone. It's sold. It's made, you know, it's gone. It's not, and I don't have any. We've sold it all. And y'all, whatever you have in your stashes is where it is. Hopefully it's in your closets. <laughs> no, it all gets sold. It all just moves on down the road. We, you know, like spring, you know, we're just getting spring in now, but spring, you know, we'll only be here for a few months and then we'll start getting winter in again. That's the best part is this change up. Even though we don't want winter right now, we'll want it in another few months when it's 100 degrees outside. We'll say, man, it would sure be nice to have a cool 40 degree weather. Okay, what else can I answer for you, you all? Trips. Anybody want to go? Go to trips. Go on to workshops. Come see us at workshops. Southern California, we've got one coming up in February. Phoenix, we leave Thursday, but I mean... Uh, Southern California, there's a lot of you down in Southern California. We've got some spaces open on that workshop, so come see us. Has pants pattern number 3200, glorious pants, been discontinued? Well, 3200 is Sally's pants, but that's not a big deal. Um, it's not on the website anymore. You know, we do have, we ha keep having that same glitch on our website. We keep trying to fix it, and we think we have it fixed for a certain one. Um, but what I'll do is check because it could be that 
we have an inventory system and you can either set it to default or out of stock and it was it came with everything on default and once it goes to default it disappears so it could be that our inventory got down to zero and it disappeared and I will check it tonight and yes we still have it it's but it is Sally's Pam but you got the number right congratulations and I'll make sure it gets back up because yes we have it we have it we printed some a little bit ago okay anything else we can help you with remember get a haircut get sewing get out get to a workshop join us in what have we got we got a we got a fabric trip to LA coming up we got all kinds of stuff going on if you feel like going overseas come on to Milan there's still two spots you guys and you're not gonna believe what we're gonna do in Milan I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be fun but it's pretty cool all right then we will see you um, Thursday night and we're, we're not Thursday I'm out of town Thursday so this is not FAQs this week we'll actually have a YouTube up and then so the next week the next week we'll have Q's and A's a week from this Thursday okay later thanks for being here happy spring yay bye